<laughs> Hello YouTube, Sentinel H here for episode 2 of my Reactor Craft tutorial series. But hey, wait. There aren't any crafting stations. There aren't any work tables. What, what are we doing? There's nothing here. Well guys, we are relocating our Reactor Craft series to a bit of a more appropriate venue. So we're going to dive into the depths around the coral reefs and arrive here at our new location. My underwater nuclear testing facility. Come on inside. Here, put our scuba gear up on the shelf. And here we are. Lovely little underwater uh, facility. And it's not the most, uh, you know, auspicious uh, place, but it, it'll work. We'll add on to it in future. We've got our oxygen circulator over here to make sure that we can have plenty of, of air to breathe. Nice fan. Alright, so uh, yeah, this is what we're going to call home for the re uh, Reactor Craft series, so I hope you like it. Anyway, uh, let's get started. In this episode, we are talking about uranium processing, um, specifically taking our pitch blend ingots, which we get, which we got from extracting uh, pitch blend through an extractor, which I hope you do because you know you want to make this stuff go as far as possible, and uh, turning it into usable fuel for uh, a couple of the reactors in uh, ReactorCraft. So, how are we going to do that? Uh, well, I'm glad you asked. Well, over here we have some machines. <clears throat> the first of which be the uranium processor. And you're going to need a uranium processor if you want to produce uranium fuel pellets for sort of your what you what you standardly think about as a nuclear reactor. So, the, if you're going to want to do that, you're going to need the uranium processor. And the uranium processor requires obsidian tanks. And obsidian tanks are crafted quite simply with eight blast glass, which means that if you want to get into uh, a nuclear reactor, if you want to build a nuclear reactor that runs on fuel pellets, you first have to get a pulse jet furnace up and produce yourself blast glass, all right? So you can't skip straight to this stuff. You're going to need to go through rotary craft until you can get that pulse jet, get those uh, blast glass, make those obsidian tanks. And you're going to need three of them. So three uranium obsidian tanks, a mixer, and two liquid pipes will get you a uranium processor. All right. And if I go over here, I'm going to place down our uranium processor right here. And you'll notice that it just filled with water. I've got a dew point aggregator set up just to give me a, a water source. And our uranium processor has water in it because the uranium processor has three tanks: uh, a water tank, a tank for hydrofluoric acid, and then a tank for uranium hexafluoride. And you're probably wondering what the heck are those things. And uh, we'll talk about those now. So the uranium processor does not require any power. So that's a good thing, right? All it requires are the materials that it needs, which is water, fluorite, which can be any color, if you're in Monster Mod Pack, because if you're not in Monster Mod Pack, apparently you don't have colored fluorite. That was something that Reka had to add uh, at Monster's request. Anyway, you, uh, the uranium processor will use the water and the fluorite crystals to produce hydrofluoric acid. So it dissolves the crystals in water to give you hydrofluoric acid. All right? So you can see the, the device has internal storage for hydrofluoric acid. You could also, I think, pump this out. I'm not really sure. Um, but what you want to do with this hydrofluoric acid is you want to combine it with pitch blend ingots. Um, well, uranium. So what you're doing is you're mixing uranium and you're, you're dissolving it in the hydrofluoric acid to produce uranium hexafluoride. And you can use either pitch blend ingots, uh, raw uranium ingots, which is what uh, Rotary Craft calls them, if you take the pitch blend ore and uh, just smelt the stuff, which I don't recommend. I recommend throwing it through an extractor. You can also use purified crushed uranium ore from industrial craft. They're interchangeable in this. If I put one in there, you see that uh, the progress bar is going. And you notice that the progress bar on this one is much slower than the progress on this one. But there's no way to speed this up um, that I know of. The uranium processor just ticks along at its own pace. And you can see we've now produced uranium hexafluoride. So I'll throw some pitch blending gets in there. And we've got uranium hexafluoride over here. We've used up some of the hydrofluoric acid and produced uranium hexafluoride. 
Now, as soon as we produce some more, um, this will probably use up enough of the hydrofluoric acid so that it'll produce uh, more of it, use up another fluorite crystal. Yep, there it goes. So now that it's down a bucket, it's going to use the fluorite crystal to make the more hydrofluoric acid. And it's just going to keep running, producing uranium hexafluoride, um, which is going to fill up the front tank of the uh, processor. Now you notice that it doesn't matter that I pumped the water into this side, it still went into its tank. But you will need to put a pipe on the front of this in order to get the uranium hexafluoride out. It will not come out the side. Um, but this uranium hexafluoride is not a liquid, it is actually a gas. So if you want to pump it around places, you're going to need gas ducts, which we haven't talked about yet, another type of pipe in rotary craft. So uh, it's quite simple to make. It's three glass and six hardened clay, which it, uh, which is a vanilla recipe. It's just clay blocks that are smelted, all right? Hardened clay. You can also find this in mountainsides um, of the mesa type. So if I put the gas duct on the front. Now it has connected, and the gas duct now has uranium hexafluoride gas in it, uh, which is all well and good, but what can we do with this uranium hexafluoride gas? How does this stuff become... Uh, fuel pellets for a nuclear reactor. Well, that is what we use the isotope centrifuge for. Alright, so you're going to need one of these as well if you want to produce uranium fuel pellets. It's very cheap to make. It's not a very complicated machine. It's just a 16x gear unit, f five base panels, and two HSLA steel ingots. Gives you an isotope centrifuge. Now the isotope centrifuge, I'm going to pop over here. It looks pretty neat. It does require power, and it actually requires quite a bit of power. The isotopes, and you can't hold shift on these machines yet uh, to display tips. I don't know if that's coming later, but you can't do that for, uh, right now. So we'll check this out. The isotope centrifuge. It needs very, very high rotational speeds, and what it, what it does is it separates out the um, isotopes of uranium. It'll produce um, depleted uranium and enriched uranium, which is how they do it in reality. They, se they separate those two out. Um, and its minimum speed required is 262,144 radians per second. And uh, it has no torque requirement, so whatever kind of power you're putting into this thing, make sure you gear it down so there's only one unit of torque so you can get the most out of your power. 262,144 is what this requires at minimum. 262144 at 1 newton meter. Turn this on and now it's spinning. Now this is what the GUI looks like. It's got a tank in the middle for the uranium hexafluoride. This is the progress meter and these are the two output slots for the depleted uranium and the enriched uranium. So what you want to do, what you probably want to do, is pipe this stuff in pipe it in the side. I was kind of surprised you could pipe it in. No, you can't pipe it in the side, that's right. It'll connect to the side, but it won't actually do it. You have to pump it in the top, which makes much more sense. The pipe will still connect to the side, though, but it won't do anything. So now we're pumping our uranium hexafluoride into our isotope centrifuge, which has a 12,000 millibucket capacity, whereas the processor only has a 3,000 millibucket capacity, so it's quite nice. It's going to fill up our tank eventually, and this is the progress meter. Now you'll notice it's very slow. This progress bar is moving really slowly at the minimum uh, power requirement, which is not ideal. This is going to take forever. And the way this works is that you're going to get depleted uranium and enriched uranium, but you're not always getting enriched uranium. The point of this and the point of this in reality as well is that the type of uranium isotope that you want to use for nuclear uh, fuel rods is not nearly as common as other isotopes. You want to get out that specific isotope that you want to use which is referred to as enriched uranium so you're going to get a lot less of it. So every time this ticks over you're going to get either depleted uranium or enriched uranium. I don't know if you can actually get both at once but you'll, get, you'll end up getting much less of the enriched than you will uh, the depleted. So if you want this to go at any reasonable speed, I highly suggest applying more power. And I am going to apply 2097152. 
And what that is, is this is the output of a micro turbine which has been geared down to one newton meter. So, so this is the entire output of a micro turbine, and I think this is a much more respectable speed. Obviously, it's still a bit slow, so you'd probably, if you, you'll, you'll want to put more power in it eventually. Once you have a functioning nuclear reactor as well, you can use part of the power it's outputting to run the isotope centrifuge and stuff if you wanna, um, or just run it off of jet fuel or something else, or set up a big uh, chain of hydrokinetic engines or something. I don't. It doesn't matter. Power it however you want, but it's going to need quite a little bit of speed in order to uh, work. So you notice that we've now run through three times, and we haven't gotten any enriched uranium. And this is this is what this thing does. Uh, you're going to have to run it quite a lot to get a decent amount of enriched uranium. That's the entire point. So you're definitely going to want to put even more power into this thing in order to get it to um, run faster. Because heating out four times, we still only have depleted. So we're going to let the isotope centrifuge run for a while, and while that's running, um, I'm going to show you another type of fuel that you can get out of uranium. So, and this is used for a different type of reactor, keep that in mind. You, uh, we're, over here we're producing uh, uranium fuel pellets to be used in a standard, well, whatever you want to call it, nuclear reactor. Over here, we're going to produce what are called TRISO fuel pellets. I don't know what that stands for, but these are used in a different reactor in the mod, which is called a pebble bed reactor. So the way that this works is that you can take your pitch blend ingots and you can grind them. So I've, I've got this down to 0 0.05 seconds. You can grind pitch blend ingots into uranium dust. All right. Now, to, you, you can use this uranium dust to produce these TRISO pellets, but you're going to need something else as well. You're going to need to take some coal, and you're going to need to grind it into coal dust. All right. So rotary craft coal dust, throw it in a grinder, four bits for coal dust. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to chuck these coal dusts in a furnace. Oh, come on. Chuck the coal dust in a furnace and cook them up. Don't worry, I've got CO2 scrubbers in here, so uh, it's not a problem that we're burning a coal underwater base. And that gives you graphite, all right? And you're going to use this graphite with the uranium dust in this recipe. One uranium dust surrounded by four graphite gives you three TRISO fuel pellets. Now, a pebble bed reactor can hold an absolute ton of these things. I'm pretty sure, I, I, I'm not sure exactly how many, either the pebble bed reactor block can either hold 32 or 64 of these things. Um, I think it's 32? Maybe less. Maybe I think it's more than 16, though. But anyway, a ton of these uh, pellets. So we get the graphite, and you can craft it, and you can make the TRISO fuel pellets for the pebble bed reactor. And we will talk about these reactors in future videos. To this time, we're, we're just talking about processing uranium into fuel pellets. Now let's see if we've gotten any rich uranium. We have not. So yeah, guys, when I say that this thing will rarely give you enriched uranium, I mean it. You're going to have to process an awful lot of uranium to get a healthy amount of the enriched stuff. We are getting plenty of depleted, but so far, not a single enriched. Sometimes this will happen. You'll go 11, 12, whatever times without getting any. Sometimes you'll get lucky, and you'll get a couple of these uh, in succession. It's, it's just the luck of the draw here, so yeah, we're just getting depleted. So in order for the, to speed up the video, I'm just going to give myself some enriched uranium. But you would have to just let the isotope centrifuge run, maybe build two of them, give more power, run these things for a long time to store up a good amount of enriched. I, I do want to see some enriched come out of this, and it will. Don't, don't worry about that, but right now it's just giving us depleted, which we can use for some things. All right, so we've got this enriched uranium dust. Well, what do we do with it? Well, if I grab a crafting station, plop it down. What we can do is we can take, and you don't need a crafting station for this. You can do this in your standard um, crafting grid in your inventory, but since I'm in creative mode, I don't have that. Uh, four enriched uranium dust, like so, will give you two uranium fuel pellets. And these are fresh pellets. And these are the fuel pellets that you will put into the fuel core for the your, uh, nuclear reactor. However, you can do a few more things with these. We can also craft depleted uranium pellets. Alright, we get two of those. And what we're running on to do is we're going to get four of these. So what one thing you can do is you can craft a fresh uranium pellet with four depleted uranium pellets to get four breeder reactor fuel. 
and that's for the breeder reactor, which is another thing out of the mod. So uh, yeah, so if you're gonna want to use a if you're gonna want a breeder reactor, you're gonna need breeder reactor fuel pellets. Otherwise, these are the fuel pellets you use for a nuclear reactor. Now the depleted uranium ingots uh, pellets do have other uses. You can raise them to craft radiation sealing fabric, which you uh, can then you can also use uh, depleted uranium to create railgun ammo. And then this fabric is used to create hazmat stuff. We'll talk about that later. So there is a use for depleted uranium. And there we go. We finally got an enriched uranium. So yeah. Um, don't be put off if you've been running these centrifuges for a while and you haven't gotten any enriched uranium. You will get enriched uranium. It just It's a low percent chance, you know. So that's how you get it. So today we've talked about a couple of different types of fuel. We've talked about the TRISO fuel pellets. I thought I had a couple, but I don't. TRISO fuel pellets for the pebble bed reactor. The uranium fuel pellets, which you make out of the enriched uranium dust for the nuclear reactor. Breeder reactor fuel, which you make from a uranium fuel pellet and four depleted uranium pellets. So yeah. Don't let this stuff intimidate you. It's really, it's just, you're building up processing systems. You're, 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 you're adding up layers, so. There we go. Now that we've talked about some fuel pellets, uh, we, we're able to now go ahead and talk about reactors uh, in the next um, episode. So, uh, in our next reactor craft, and, and just so you know, these reactor craft episodes are going to be significantly longer than the rotary craft episodes. We're going to talk about entire reactors in an episode. So, next episode, for example, unless we talk about... Um, yeah, we're going to end up talking about all of these blocks, but we're going to talk about them in the context of the reactors that they're going to be building. So the next video, we're going to talk about the high temperature gas reactor, which is the pebble bed reactor core. And the reason we're talking about this first is because this is the f this is the only one that I've built yet. This is the one that I know how to build, and so we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about quite a few of these things as well. Um, Actually, no. We'll talk about the pebble bed, about actually building the pebble bed reactor in the next, in the, the third, uh, fourth episode. Next episode, I think we're going to talk about some of these power generation machines because you're going to need to use these machines to get power out of these reactors. And so, since these are necessary, we're not going to talk about these two. Though. We'll talk about them later. So, we're going to talk about these machines in the next uh, episode, and then the episode after that, I'll show you how to build a high temperature gas reactor. So I hope you have enjoyed the episode. I hope you uh, continue to enjoy the Reactor Craft series moving forward as we, uh, in our new location. And uh, yeah, so I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out.